Hey guys, it's Kashif here from KR Graphics, and I'm back with another video. And this one was out of was um, I guess this is a response to a question I had on the modal forums about how I went about creating my facial rig. Now, for the last few months, I've been, I mean, well, I needed something to work up my character modeling. I um, uh, and I after seeing um, a video on Pixel Fun due by Bukash Pazera on how to extend the ACS2 rig in Modo, as well as the um, the Snapper facial rig. From Maya, I was um very inspired to to take to take on the challenge for creating a facial rig because well there weren't there weren't very many from Modo that I've seen yet, and I wanted I wanted the challenge of um learning um how to do te technical rigging and understanding the process of creating a rig and building it out. So right now I'm going to I'm going to show you how I went about doing that. So here's a character I worked on from one of my game projects, and basically I wanted to create a a joint base a joint face rig that could be easily animated by posing the face any way I want. Not, not could do it with blend shapes, but you know with blend shapes it takes too long and 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 I'm not known for my patience in creating a blend shape. And where I need any I need to change anything, I have to go back and remodel the face again and then bring it back here. And that could be very time consuming. So let's get started. I'll show you how I went about creating this facial rig. So let's go ahead and um Open a facial rig up, and you'll see all these joints in the face. Um, probably too many for most engines like Unity or Unreal 4, but hey, records are made to be broken, right? And these are all the joints that you need around the face. So if I pick one, I can go ahead and um, put it up like this, and snap it, I can put it like this, and then reset it. Boom. It returns to zero, which, which indicates that it is um, part of the ACS2 rig. So I'm going to go a little in depth and show how I did all that. So this is the facial skeleton, bind joints, and I can show you right now too. It's all working together. If I do this, it'll, you'll see that the head's working right now. It's all working together, which is beautiful. I need I needed that to happen. So, all right. So let's go ahead and I'll go. I'll pick a part of the model that I want to work with, and this one is going to be the eyebrow. So let's go ahead and open the open the uh, first and open the um. This this folder here, so I can find my guided joints. I'll show I'll show you when we're doing that. So do this. I'm gonna go on channels here and set the visible. So you see everything. So these are, these are my guide joints. This, this is how I started creating the um facial rig. So actually, it started from a blind skeleton. So let's go here and open open up the um my assemblies here. Let's give it a second. I'm on, old, I'm on an older laptop. I'm on an older laptop, so it's gonna be it's not gonna load because I'm with so many controls in his face. It's ridiculous. It's about there are nearly 200 joints in his face, and it's all and they all correspond to um to, to a muscle in the face. So let's go over here to my little to my to my module here. And if you haven't seen the video by Lucas on the ten ACS2 rig, I recommend you checking that video out. So it's pretty clear and concise how to how to um modify a rig. So let's go to the um let's go to uh the eyebrow. I'll pick I'll pick an eyebrow. Pick the right eyebrow. I think it's easy enough to pick from. Alright, so oh before I do before I just do that, let me um just say to move the constraints off of this. Well not, not a constraint but I have a have an odd have an I have an I have an armor locator that allows me to control the entire facial rig. Um with orientation. So, all right. That being said, let's go back to this. And pick the right eyebrow. Now, if you notice, now only these bone, only got only bones are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how exactly did this. So I'll go ahead and just go ahead and um, paint in this for this. Okay. And that should be fine. All right. So here's what I did. To create my fit, fit the um the facial the, all the joints of facial rig so if I pick this this joint here this is the guide this is the guided joint for the um to move the bone around in ACS2 rig you have to um make sure you name your, your joints properly so this is right eyebrow bind which is down here which is down to the bottom of the character's feet somewhere which is usually right here this is this is, this is the bind joint and to do that you name it I guess for your test rig you call it char character one Double underscore and whatever joint's gonna be. In the soft is called bind. 
which indicates that it's going to be skin to, skin to the character and also baked down on export to your game engine like Unity or Unreal 4. So this is important. And then after, and then of course you want to make sure you want this bone to follow the control joint. Now my face rig, all the control jo all the control joints are in the completely the completely independent of each other. There's no there's no hierarchy for the control joints. However, there needs to be a hierarchy for any joint you create for your um character. It's all going to be it's, all, it's basically the big the big skeleton in the game. So this is important right here. So you create your um after you create your um your your joint, you call it call it call it call it what you want. Make sure you put the suffix bind in brackets, and then you go to your channels box and you right click on roll position and apply apply the schematic. And what that will do is it allow it will it allow the object to be driven by another object's roll position. So it's like a quick way of parenting. Okay. The same, next one is control joint. If I, turn, if I turn on the control joints, I turn on the control channel, you can see this button here. This is just for animation contact, so you better animate this. Now in this one, you notice how there's a um, position, transform, and then position zero. In the ACS2 rig, when you create your um, control joints, you uh, make sure you can actually do this quickly by duplicating the bond joint and then rename the changing the suffix to select control. Which is, which is pretty fast, is what I did with my facial rig, is how I got the bones to be created quickly. So then, you create two create two channels for schematic. You create a wolf position, same place, same thing as the other one, create a wolf position, okay, kick at channel schematic, and then you plug this into a wolf position of the bind joint. And what that would do is, when I move this, when I move this the control joint, it'll follow the right, it'll, the bind will follow behind it. It's a nice, it's a nice clever way of um, parent-child relationship. And the next one is you want to add a position zero transform. Now control joints have to be zero transform, totally zero. Go to properties, make sure it's totally zero. There's no no transformation whatsoever, no transform information whatsoever. And also too, and for ACS to see the see the joint, you um you go you go to your tags and you type in. RGSG, which is part of the facial rig, in the schematic. And you also create, create folders and drag them all in there. I'll show you the folders that go in here, go in your schematic in a second. And then you create channels that are going to be animatable. So, like I put P3 equals, R3 equals, and S3 equals, which means the position, the rotation, and the scale would not be animated, but they'll be inherited by the parent object when baked. Same thing here for this one. Go to tags. It's kind of the same process with this one. You go to um, go to position three hashtags, and then you leave the rest. Since um, on a face rig, it's going to be just position data anyway. You can you can just um turn off the rotation and scaling. So, the next one is important an important one. This is the guided skeleton, and when I was creating my my facial rig, this gave me the most trouble. Because mainly, of course, the facial rig with, with the facial rig. I um the first pass of this I broke the rig by accident, so I couldn't figure this out so it got me. And the guided joints basically what you do with this one is you copy you copy you copy the bind the bind joint for this one, since it's non-zero, and bring it to this one. I mean they're probably noticing now that um the guided joints are way are way up here in the face, and the other joints are down the bottom. And the reason that is when I first when I should, when initially created this I didn't have the um, I didn't I didn't have the constraints to join the skeleton together. Like this node right here, called um character one face choice master. This is this is the plug for all of the joints in the face. Without this, if I plug if I plug it in right now and I turn this off, all I'm, like I'll show you real quick what happened. See, it goes to the bottom because it's basically it's basically a parent of this. And what's important as well is you want to make sure that there's no no data whatsoever on this. You want you want it to be absolute zero, no position, no rotation or scale. So basically, so you create a locator in Modo. I'll do one now for you. Hit the L key. You create a loc so loc locators. They they're always in their origin. They always go to zero until you move them. So I'm going to move them real quick. Hit, hit move. You've now created positional data 
on that on that locator, which is um, for this particular kind of setup, you don't want that. So let's delete that locator. So for the guided skeleton, you want to make sure that there's if you don't zero it out. There's no position zero. So same thing, create the world position, and then I go to um, the transform. You right click on this and add an add to you add it to your node, your schematics. And the edit in the edit joints, same thing. Just add it to um, what position. With the, with, the, with the edit joints plug into this, this will just will drive the this allows you to drive the position of the bone on the face at any given time. So when it's all wired up, what what I ended up doing before I did the constraints, but sadly when I did the constraints, my guide bones are here, but then the other bones were way above the character's head. And I'm not gonna lie to you, that really kind of bothered me a little bit because I couldn't figure it out for a little while. But then I'll go ahead and plug it back in there. All my guide joints are back where they were. And it, 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 what I ended up doing, I ended up um, setting, setting up, um, I have to match the new position of the bone with this intact. So, such as, let's go, um, like, let's go back to the eyebrow. Like, before the constraints, this right here was, um, what the hell is 5 3? Let me change my units. I usually don't work in feet and inches. I work I work with the metric system, like my, my projects. I was um doing some work doing some work earlier and I forgot what I was doing. So let me click on this for a second. There we go. So so basically this this edit joint on the Y is one point five eight meters, which is about which is about roughly five five on a person. And when I created the, the um the guided joint as well. You notice how it changed to um, 8.4 centimeters, which is way in the bottom of the floor. And what that does, by by plugging in my my um my master node first into the um in, by plugging this plug into a socket, this is a plug with world position, location, and scale, and this is a socket. And based on plugging the socket, I can basically control this. This here is driven by this, then you know, this is driven by this. This is this is the um head epic controller. So basically it's a, it's, a, it's a huge daisy chain. It's driven by animation. So when I move when I move this, everything moves in the spatial rig. So if I turn if I return to the eyebrow, oh, I will see. So so I what I ended up doing was when I when I created when I initially created the guide skeleton. I had to match position of this to this. So to do this, if I right click on this, that's um me you know, you know, I'm gonna move this real quick. Alright, won't do it won't do anything. So if I go ahead now and turn off let's, let's turn off let's turn off let's turn off, let's, let's turn off, let's turn off this constraint for a second. Let's go move that for a second. If I go back now to my eyebrow, and I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't do this. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here. It's, uh, it's, on, it's on the, um, this joint's on the floor now. I click up here. This is where my edit joint would be. If I click on this, this is where it would be. So right now, you notice it disappeared. So I'm going to go like this and match position of it. So it'll now jump up here. It'll, it'll now match up. So I'm plug it, it plugs back in here. Like so. And plug it back in. So transform. And then of course it's, it's now it's now there. You see this little rhombus. Now if I plug in my constraint, so I plug this joint master in there. Watch this right here. This will disappear, and you you never you never see it again. See, it disappeared, and that part really bothered me. That's when I was, I was doing some next year with the rig. So let's find let's find that bone. Let's see where it went. You know it went into infinity somewhere. So it's now way up here, and if you do a facial rig or any kind of rigging in motor like this, you will see that you gotta avoid this pitfall. So to fix this, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go ahead and match I'm going to match it again. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and match the position again. And the numbers should change. And if I do it like this, the number changed. It's now it's what it is. This what it is, this guided skill this guided bone here has now inherited the position. Of that of that master node I plugged into the neck just now, so 
you can see how this came back. This is what this is what happens when you get your control link back. And let me show you um, the guides go. The um, edit guides. So if I let's let's say I want to change um the position of a, of a bone in the character's head, that's pretty easy. If you do this, go to your match your drop action, go to place, and click on it. It's click is click on it. Click, click, click and drag, and click that anywhere in the character's head. You see now this this one here and that one there move together. It's um I set it up so that it's asymmetrical. I mean symmetrical, so quicker set up on the face. And these markers are designed to allow me to um I can drive my face animation using motion capture. Um, I'm currently working on a um a custom made helmet rig with two cam with two or three cameras and a perception and a perception neuron that will allow me to that will allow me to um capture both body and face at the same time. So if I hit this button here to apply changes, you know, in a second, you now see the joint is moved. Let's put it back where it was again. And hit it in the step. I mean, this, this is a pretty this is pretty challenging in itself. I spent a lot of time trying to trying to uh, modify this so that it is suits my needs. And also and also too by having it in a in a um in assemblies like this, it allows for easier addition of features like, you know, I, I can add a tongue rig or I can add controls for breath for, for breast physics or or, or or even or even a full fledged um muscle system in the body. Which I'm planning on doing in the future once I figure this out. Um, and also too, to get ASS to recognize all these joints, you have to pick your joints and then go to your groups folder, and then you um, and then you let's say you want to go to guides, you pick all your guides and then you right click and hit add items, which will which which basically which allow which gives some um, further integration to the rig. Without this, you bring in the moto, you lose you lose all of this, which is which will cause you to lose hair and kick yourself get you mad like, like I did I am um, and also too I finished this rig on New Year's Eve which is definitely going to close out the close out 2017 um so that being said you drive it you drive a keys here which is um is, it was inspired it was inspired by the snapper rig I could basically I could basically link poses of all these joints to any control in space any control here on this face I also said also set it up so that I can pull I can pull it forward, I can go up and down, I could any direction on this rig to control the face. So with that being said, I um hope you guys found this well video kinda of long, but hope you found it interesting to how I set up a facial rig. This was um a very important setup because um it's very involved and I am not, I am not a I am not I am not a um I am not a technical artist by any means, but I had I had fun creating this facial rig, and and I believe it um will help me in the long run too for creating my model. So, without further ado, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Um, if you liked the video, um, or you have any questions, leave a question below in the comment box. I'll be sure to answer it. But also leave a like if you liked it, a thumbs down if you didn't, and I'll definitely improve my technique for um capturing videos. And definitely subscribe, where I um I always have some new content to show you and new insights as well as new creativity so with that being so without further ado i want to thank you guys for watching this video have a good night and happy creating bye for now